Hi, Mr. Mac. Wake people up too, too much. Where's or that? Is that like certain ones? Like how far into the bread comes? I don't know, Rabbit bro. Hold you, bro. Because there's, there's so much information. I don't know. Like revealing the unknowns. Maybe they told you, man. I don't know. I don't. They didn't tell me anything, bro. I think I, I would be a different place in life if I knew some secrets. I'm trying to find the secrets. I was gonna say, is there like a secret that you'd want to like barter with them for? Like, yo, tell me what happened with JFK, bro. Or like, is there one that you're like? I don't know. I, I just, I, I just want to see what's on Area 51 for real. Area 51. Mm. What if they brought you there and there's just a bunch of fucking mattresses and like furniture that they had left over so, from the Soviet so era? Then, so then that would. But actually, Area 52 was the one though. Oh, that'd be for some bullshit. Oh, yeah, Area 51. We can go there right now. See the mattress thing. It's funny that you bring that up because I think they'd be money laundering with the mattress stores. Because why is there a mattress like two mattress stores on the block? You need a mattress like once every seven years. No one's buying that many mattresses. How are they in business so so often? They're doing something illegal, bro. It's something. I mean, there's only so many hospitals and schools out there that actually need like a new mattress. Like, cause I know residentially we ain't getting a new one that frequently, bro. Mm -mm. I had the same IKEA mattress for like forever. It wasn't yeah. even like I loved IKEA mattresses like that. It was just like, all right. Oh, you were a victim of circumstance, like yeah. we all are. I ain't see mattress firm and was like, you know what? They might, they might get me. But that's right. the thing. It's not the fact that you see a mattress firm. It's that you will see a mattress firm and then you'll fucking see another one before you finish with your job. And it's like. Do you need what? I'm I'm not understanding. Yeah, I was staying over in Riverview. Just took like Big Ben straight down. I saw you mm -hmm. pass like seven of them on each side of the road. What are they doing? They all ain't selling mattresses. They just you like, drive by. There's no one there. Yeah. No one in there. You walk in, they you look have, like there's. You ever walk, you ever drove by a mattress store and there's a full parking lot once in your entire life? I'm 26 years of age. Like going out business sale or something like that. They're just like throwing mattresses off the roof of the. Even still, I've never seen a full parking lot of a mattress store. Yeah. I don't know, that's worth noting. Any other places that, like, you kind of, like, when do you ever see a full parking lot? Um, but you don't? You know what? Like, I used to say Arby's until I, like, visited Georgia one time. Yeah. And the line was wrapped around. I swear, I kid you not, I have, I have people to witness. Because we went to, uh, we, like, went to Atlanta on a group trip. A group trip. And I forgot what city we were, like, passing through. And I, I swear to you, bruh, the Arby's line was around, like, the shit. They, they really fuck our Arby's out there. We just don't fuck with Arby's. Like, did they drop like something new on the menu? No, or? bro. It was just uh, I don't know. But what's the difference between Hardee's and Arby's, though? Can we be real? I thought they were sister companies. Are they? No, I don't know. Is that like KFC, Taco Bell, or they're definitely not sisters? There? Nah, which one is it? It's um not nah, Dunkin' Donuts and is it Baskin Robbins? You like you'll see like one I of them, them both conjoined. on the same building. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. I see them conjoined. It's oh, because I think they do that because like you don't really interfere with my. Um, clientele. Mm -hmm. Same with the like you brought up the KFC and the Taco Bell. We don't, <laughs> we don't like have anything to do with each other. So it's cool. Why Taco Bell is always next to a Chick Fil A. Taco Bell always next to a Chick Fil A. You know, no, am, I, am I the only one that knows that? Low key over in that neck of the woods. I know what you're talking about over there. There is one there. Uh, mm -hmm. I feel like I see that a lot. Nah, two of them They're on not, that not, road. Not conjoined. Yeah, yeah. Not conjoined. They just know that they can put it safely next to a Chick Fil A because it's not going to interfere with their business. If you want tacos, Chick Fil A doesn't even come up in your mind. If you want a chicken sandwich, you would never think of Taco Bell. You see what I'm saying? Oh, it's true. They don't conflict. That's funny. Yeah. So like, I can put my I can put my Taco Bell on the same block as a Chick Fil A. However, like, if my predominant like product is chicken and I see a Chick Fil A, I'm intimidated. I'm going that way. You know, I don't Zaxby's? want. No, I don't. I don't. Zaxby's. Oh, I don't no. want nothing to do with you. I'm sorry. I'm only gonna get business on Sundays. I'm not. I don't want no smoke. Oh you know what I'm man, that would be wild if Zaxby's just started like killing Chick Fil A in a certain area just because they're open on Sunday and people are like, fuck <laughs> it, I'll just go there Monday too, bro. Might as well, bro. You know. Yeah. It is. I like Zaxby's a lot. It's funny though. Apparently, like um, with marketing and shit, apparently McDonald's. It's the same way that CVS, Walgreens, any like sister or neighboring company like that that they'll find whatever shop that McDonald's sets up at, whatever four-road intersection, mm -hmm. and then they'll just try to buy the property around the other way because they're like, people are going to come for McDonald's. McDonald's did all the research into this. They know mm -hmm. McDonald's foot traffic, you know. Kind of makes sense. That's kind of like Everything's the, intentional. Yeah, but that's just like the biting it's like as a rapper. If you like create like a new sound, somebody like, are they fucking with that over there? Mm -hmm. well, I'm going to do this then. Try to, try to, try to find shit, your own right? lane and whatnot. How do you feel about rappers like that? Like um, what? The ones that maybe are clouded from trend hopping or sound biting. 
plowed it from train hopping or something. So just basically trying to find your own lane? No, no, no. It's somebody who maybe at one point had their own lane, and then they decided that it was more advantageous to just start kind of seeing what other people were doing and just hopping in their lane. It's like, I feel like that's a trend that's happened throughout music in general, but hip-hop, you know, lasted um, 20 years. I'm a firm, like, just in life, mm. I'm a firm believer of um, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. However, when it comes to, like, when it comes to, like, music especially, we get bored easy. So I think they're they're trying to, like, dib and dab so to, like, beat the curve. You know what I'm saying? To get ahead of, like, falling off or becoming old. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? There is a such thing as doing it too early, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're riding this wave. Just just keep riding it. You know what I'm saying? Kind of see where it goes and then yeah, jump off. Yeah, kind of see where place. it goes and have your backup plans and then, you know, dip off. And it's, it's, it's difficult with music because, like, especially rappers, because, like, we could be doing something that gets us big. Like, we have a certain flow, a certain rap style, and the people really fucking with it. And then, like, as creatives, we kind of get bored sometimes. And we want to try something new and just not received well. So then you, you fall back and doing what you were doing, but you're doing what you're doing so long, people are like, damn, can I get something new? But it's yeah. like I tried to give you something new, and you didn't like it. So it's like I'm really confused as to what you want me to do. So that's why you just got to make music for yourself. Mm. Like... I just realized that probably kicking on just sounds like the worst audio quality in the whole world. But okay, we can erase that in post. But that is kind of like funny though, because it can kind of turn into like a marketing strategy in some ways too. Because if you look at the baby, I feel like that was like his. You know, that one. was what was in my head. Right. You don't like to say names, but I feel like he's one that is actually taking that, and it's like he knows if he takes a step to the left people are going to make the biggest reaction in the whole world mm-hmm. where it's like now that's almost more intentional than anything it's like almost like if i want to go viral all i got to do is do a song where i just kind of like hop in this bag for a second just do a new flow yeah. or like not you know not necessarily viral but like just have like you know the comment section start like you know making mm-hmm. something engagements up or something but yeah i get that do you feel it do you feel like there's a way the artist can tell when is the moment to switch as opposed to doing it too early something that you've noticed in some of your favorites or um, just any way that you see symmetry in that? I mean, I don't know if it's like a formula behind it. Of course, somebody could be like, oh, I look at numbers and like look at the projections and shit like that. But even that doesn't tell the whole story. I think like, I know for like for myself, when I'm creating, there's a gut feeling. I can't explain it. It's like, it's like, I don't know. Intuitive? I don't think, yeah, I think it's I think it's intuitive for me, but then when you get to a certain level, it becomes more more methodical and it becomes more archaic and it becomes more based upon the audience reception of things, and I think that's when you kind of lose like the love for it, and it starts becoming like, what is it that's going to hit, and not what is it that you want to do, hmm. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You get stuck in the box, and I want to be like that. Yeah, I get that. I've seen like interesting moments though where it seems like you kind of get put into a box just based off of your position in the like the same way like it's like WWE or something. It's like mm-hmm. as soon as you I say something or do something, right? Then all of a sudden it's like there's an expectation of how your storyline continues as opposed to like if I never did that there would never be an expectation I could mm-hmm. just kind of move about however I wish to. You find that to be a good thing from perspective obviously because that's like you know if we get into a situation when we get into a situation mm-hmm. where we have as much people talking and creating narratives about our storylines as we mm-hmm. want them to hopefully right sometimes mm-hmm. not everybody gets into their control sometimes it's like you know all the media gossip blogs want to talk about is you mm-hmm. how how much would that play a factor do you think into your creative process like the storyline going around around you what people are saying about you like oh you're gonna reply back to so and so oh i heard so and so you know i'm i'm so like i always call myself a mad scientist with this shit mm-hmm. and i'm gonna figure out a way to make the narrative and what's happening around me into some form of like entertainment so like with me i'm just gonna kind of like be the one to roll with it and play with it like we was having a conversation um at the Dark House event, mm. where we were talking about like battle rap, I think I think I think we were talking about that with you, and I was like, I'm not, oh yeah, we was we was, and I'm like, bro, I'm not like a, 
I'm not like a battle rapper per se. Like I can rap really well and I know I can rap aggressive, but I'll be more of the type to just like come up with a crazy fucking visual and concept and, 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 and come at you that way. Yeah. I'm much more into that. So I, so just bringing it all back home, like when people come and create narratives of me or in this, that, and the third, I would just play on it. That's what it sounds like. You can't like. take life too serious. It'd be just more fuel to the fire for you. Because mm-hmm. I'm up here, it's crazy. Yeah. Is there a moment in your life where you kind of like realized that maybe it was in childhood, maybe it was in the classroom, outside the classroom, where you just kind of realized that from an artistic standpoint, cerebral, whatever, like the right word is right there, you're like, oh, I got something special. I need to do something with this. I need to lead, lead this way. That's a great question. Um... I don't really know how to answer that because I don't know. Maybe it was a culmination of like a bunch of moments or like, you know, hitting the same repetitive like pattern in life where it's like, oh, maybe I have a, a, a hidden talent here or a talent that I wasn't putting as much attention to. Because I know you're also a really big athlete and everything like that too. Still, I don't want to say a really okay, big athlete. My fault. Because like I, 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 really, I, really I really started doing athletic shit. It's, it's crazy. After school, like after yeah. high school is when I started like, damn, I wish I really would have fucking did this. But um, damn. I would say it's a combination of things that that made me think. And another thing is like I told you about all like the endeavors I had. Like I, I had a, I did a fucking uh, uh, AMV page on Instagram. I did. Uh, I was I was part of one media uh, uh, platform. Created my own. Did the poetry. It's some other stuff that I can't remember that I did. And it's like every time I did those things, I found myself growing. It never ever got stagnant. It was just like I would lose interest or I would burn out and things of that nature. Mm-hmm. And I think the combination of all those things let me know that, bro, I, I got something up here. Like, and I always, and when I'm doing certain things, I always feel like, I always say, I don't know if it's cockiness or arrogance. I don't think it's either. I think it's just what it is. I think that I'm just in inherently more creative because I feel like with the resources that I have at, at whatever time I'm doing things, I'm always like creating something new. And I would see people do something similar. Hmm. But that could be coincidence, but it's only, it happens so many times where it can't be coincidence. Like, where does that come from? Were you like a Lego blocks and like J.I. Joe's kind of kid? Like what was your creative outlet as a youth? What uh, what kind of, because at, at some point, I imagine that probably like showed itself where you were like given the same toy blocks as other kids, but you were able to like mm. take it a different way or something? I don't know if I have anything like that specific. Okay. But I do know that like my imagination was always vivid. Um, it's kind of one of those things like, like, that's why I, don't, I, I didn't, or I don't like scary movies. It's because, like, my brain is so vivid, it's so imaginative that, like, I'm not going to sleep. <laughs> because, like, the, it's, it goes beyond the movie, too, too. Because, like, the scenarios that I would create in my brain is just, like, this shit is, like, you you have no idea. Like, I'm tormenting myself. Um, and, like, I would notice that my creativity, like, when I write, because I was a really good writer, really, really avid writer, but, like, really good creative writer. Like, I told you about the... Um, the chapter book concept I had called mm-hmm. with Alan Jones and the superhero Blase Blase. And yeah, I will yeah, always... Alan Jones coming soon. Everybody in the One comment day. section just keep putting Alan Jones underneath of all of his pictures, all of his posts. Just every time you're he posts anything, to, just put Alan Jones. You're going to force me to fucking make it. Or you're going to have to drop a song called Alan Jones. One or the other, man. I could. That would be kind of funny if everybody just kept flooding you over and over and over again. Alan, Alan Jones, Jones, Alan Jones, Alan Jones. Jones. You post a pic, you feel like you look at fly, they just say, damn, look at Alan Jones. Alan Jones, that shit. And it's funny because I got locks now. And I always had a ball. Then I got to tell the people about Alan Jones. Yeah, if you should wish I, to, but I, at the same time, you know, like it's a trade secret, man. So up to you oh, how yeah. much you want to give, right? But you always bringing the creativity out of me, man. Um, I mean... You can say it in so many words, right? Yeah. You don't got to, like, give them, like, you know, character profile and the whole breakdown necessarily. Nah, I ain't going to give them that. I ain't going to give that. We only got enough time on the pod. But, um... Yeah, it is a whole conversation to itself. Alan Jones is basically... Ride. Yeah, it was. We had a whole car ride in the fucking U-Haul. But, um, Alan Jones is basically a, a superhero I created when I was young. Um, and he's a mix between, like, Batman, which is my favorite superhero. Pretty much been my favorite superhero for a minute. Uh, it was like Spider Man at one point. That's neither here nor there. But he's a mixture between like Batman, like a Luke Cage, and like uh, insert uh, hero that manipulates energy. And he kind of was the Inafora. And I ain't letting that word just fucking slide by. What the fuck did you just say? 
I use the word wrong, which is funny. Which is funny. I use the word wrong, and alpha means like a, it's like it's like a word that keeps a word or phrase that keeps repeating in a poem. But I was wow, trying to okay. I was trying to say that he's like a character that kept repeating in different stories. Like I have my own universe, and he was like the the HUD for everything. And I wrote like a couple chapter books, and I used that in quotation marks. But I was in like fucking fifth grade. My chapters were like two pages, but I wrote a chapter a couple chapter books based upon him and his friends and things of that nature. And talking with Alex Mack a couple months ago, we're gonna bring him back. Alan Jones, Alan Jones, Alan Jones mm-hmm, comment mm-hmm, section. Mm-hmm. They don't know nothing about that. I got so many ideas, bro. Oh yeah. What um what do you think has been like your biggest like journey or battle as far as like personal development to get to this place to have the freedom of creation to understand where you wanna be at from like um creative just in general right i feel like creatives we all go through um different personal development struggle obviously because my, my whole i'll put mine under too like pearl god or like you know the story of the pearl that's like the, the adversity and irritation of the sand getting into the oyster is what creates the pearl but mm. then the pearl is so beloved right because it represents luxury but it's pain and earned luxury type shit you know mm. So my my brand, my LLC, Pro God, I go for it. That's what it is. But I feel artists, a lot of our stories and creative is like a vague way of expressing personal development. So I'm kind of just curious about you. Have you sat there and reflected upon your own personal development? Like, damn, I was really like this, and I started doing this, and blah, 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 however, however it hits get, you. Like, let's get into it, brother. Let me talk about some real. Let me turn to you, you know what I mean? There you go. But yeah, nah, yeah. That's am I sitting in the frame? Oh, just just slightly. Let me good? see. Yeah, yeah. I'm straight. Man, we wanna talk about personal development. I'm gonna keep it a buck with you, bro. Like, I never felt like I could do things correctly. Like I, I had a, a like a strong sense of of course it goes back to your childhood, but like it's neither here nor there. Strong sense of uh in, inadequacy, strong sense of like uh you're accident prone, strong sense of like you, you you just not gonna be able to do extraordinary things. But little did I know I was doing extraordinary things all the time, whether it had been with creativity, like writing, because I'm 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 a very I'm very good at writing. I knew I was good at that. And and I knew I was very creative, hence the Alan Jones things. But I and then I I didn't really notice like the impact I had with people. Like I'm I feel like I'm just such a welcoming and calming presence for people and I'm I find myself always there for people. And and of course I'm saying this shit now, hindsight 2020, but there was a there was a long period in my life where I felt like I wasn't really any of those things, you know what I'm saying? And I had to like really fight tooth and nail with myself. A lot of talks with God, a lot of talks with myself, and like really feel like, yo, you 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 have flaws, and that's okay. Like I'm my own worst critic, you have flaws, but you still like like you have something. You know what I'm saying? And it wasn't until recently that I got through that, bro. Like, damn, I'm my whole life dealing with that shit. And I thought I had, like, I, like, self-diagnosed. Recently, I self-diagnosed myself with, like, imposter syndrome. Uh, self-diagnosed? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I feel like that's the one. Like, I feel like a lot of creatives have imposter syndrome. Yeah. Like, I can't lie, the amount of time. But, you know, I was going to say, speaking for myself, I don't, like, have a specific, but the amount of times that, like, you know, you feel that. And it's funny because it's the same type of shit where sometimes you just got to pop out of show niggas. Sometimes like, you got to you know? pop out of show niggas. Yeah. Because it's really, like, for yourself, too. Like, you know, like, you know the... A stupid example, right? Just how my brain works, right? With the mm. backflip at the fucking... I remember like, off the stage, It's yeah. like I've talked about it enough times, and at the same time, it's like, nigga, I'm, I'm the one that's really going to, like, full send it, and mm-hmm. I'm going to see what the fuck happens. And it's like... You're going you to hit it next time. Yeah. You're landing. Yeah. But, like, to me, like, because it was funny, because, like, everybody said, oh, I didn't even get to pull out my camera. Like, mm-hmm. I didn't even get to pull out my phone. And in my head, it was like, I just didn't even want a Mississippi of doubt to, like, mm-hmm. hop in that moment. Because I know how powerful that, like, mm. imposter is. Like, especially, like, I felt like I did really good on my set for the most part, yeah. right? So it's like, I didn't even want that, like, split second. Like, okay, guys, we're going to do a backflip off the stage. And then people sit there and be like, oh, shit, word. And everybody just stares for a second. I'm like, mm. okay, I'm going to do it, guys. And it's like, shit, I might not land this bitch, but I fucking, I want to try this shit. Talked about mm. it enough times. Talked about it enough. Oh, yeah. That's another, that's another interesting thing. Well, not interesting thing, but it's funny you say that, like, talked about it enough because... I did a lot of that, a lot of talking, a lot of like, yeah, I'm about to do this. I'm about to, I'm about to, I'm about to. Why don't you just do it? And I got, and I'm like a big perfectionist too. 
Mm. So that was another thing. It never comes out the way I want, but it's like, bro, the best you can do is the best you can do, bro. Yeah. I feel like in some ways that doubt is what makes you the creative that you are, but at the same time, mm. that doubt can be so fucking paralyzing where it's like being able to say like you've recently kind of broken out of that embryo of maybe like self-doubt or whatever, like imposter syndrome, whatever like the appropriate diagnosis is, but you being able to break out of that allowed that true critic and like critic in like the best way to then shine as opposed to being like the, you know, the overbearing parent or something that just beats you down to like a pulp type shit where it's like, you know what? I just wasn't my best, mm. but I know I got to put it out, and I know that I'm going to keep growing as a creative. Mm. I don't know. We don't got to take it too, too deep for this first one, but, like, I like the answers, man. Um, love to chat here for forever by, like, having, like, little installments with people, keep them, like, you for know, sure. there's still so much more that we could talk about. And, and, um, and just to tell the people, I, I, I ain't mean to interject, but, like, just to tell the people, bro, always a great conversation with this guy like on off camera like it's always an interesting conversation so this didn't even feel like uh, a pod or an interview it just felt like we was talking because we just talked like this oh yeah man uh anything else you want to tell the people man um, i do have a i do have a question i can go out on i kind of made it a theme with my last ones if you want to go out on a question or if there's anything that you want to tell the people should i tell the people first and then you next week your world man um i'm just what, facilitating when did this come out uh, it's going to come out in the following weeks. I'm going to have each one drop in. Because I, I plan on dropping a, a song called Place at the end of the end of June, early July. End of June. Yeah, this will be out before then. Okay, yeah. So I want y'all to stay tuned for that. And we and me and Mac, we also got something cooking up. When is it? Do, is it dropping when we want it to drop? Um, yeah. Maybe we, we're, I think we're still on like July, August kind of. Mm-hmm. Maybe like kind of earlier because I want to be after that drop. But okay. you're saying after, mid, after July 4th. All right, bet. Messing with that. We got shit coming out, you know what I'm saying? Stay tuned for us, you know? Oh, yeah. Um, if you want to go out with the last three questions and let that be the bang, uh, the question I was asking other people is, what are your three biggest red flags in a relationship? Mm. Shit. I don't even know. Uh, Give me the second one. Okay. Let, me, let me come back to that. While you think. Let me come back to that one. Let me come back to that one. I got to come back to that question. Okay. Well, then shit, man. We're going to save that for the next installment. Oh, shit. Hook, I really got to think about that. Okay. Okay, I'm going to think about it's it. It's going to be five next time. So oh, I'm I'll, I'll give you the, the easy way. I'm going to have them. You okay. just put me on the spot, bro. Hey, I got you. Put you on the spot with a bunch of shit. Beautiful interview, my guy. Yes, sir. I'm about to say, Hi, Mr. Mac. Where's Alex? Where's Alex?